in the last stream. We got started with Pneumaticraft. We set up our air compressors and this pressure chamber, which is finally allowing us to turn our elements into dust. And then that dust can be smelted into ingots now that we have an actual Minecraft furnace. We also managed to get this transmutation table, which has also allowed us to store all of the elements in one convenient and easy location. And so now going forward, whenever we need any one of a particular element, we can just come into here, type in, for example, gold, and then pull out as much gold as we like. And as we can see here as well, once we have at least one dust, which we get through the pressure chamber, we can then put that as well into the transmutation table. And so going forward, getting gold is as simple as taking the gold dust out of the transmutation table and placing it into the furnace. It is a little expensive. It has an EMC value of 1,264 per gold dust. However, EMC is basically free because we have unlimited cosmic dust. We can take that cosmic dust, right click it to get a bunch of elements and then put all of those elements into the transmutation table for free EMC. Now, the plan for today's stream is going to be to work towards more pneumaticraft. We're going to work our way down, I believe, this left-hand side of the quest line, starting with the makeshift pump or the gas lift. This here is pretty straightforward. It requires more reinforced stone slabs, more pressure tubes, and a small fluid tank. I do believe there is also a quest for the small fluid tank. There is indeed. It requires some iron bars, some compressed iron ingots, and some glass. All of that seems pretty straightforward. One thing that I think we should do right from the get-go is grab enough iron here to make one iron dust because we don't actually have iron dust saved in our transmutation table. And I have a feeling we're going to need a lot more iron dust today than we managed to pillage from the purgatory dimension. I know we've got a lot more pneumaticraft to do. I see a lot of recipes here for different machines from pneumaticraft. And down here specifically, I see the artificial sun rays, which wants us to craft a UV light box. I see the etching tank and I see etching acid, which makes me think we're going to be making uh, PCBs at some point in this pack. The PCBs require the UV light box. They require the etching acid to be made. And so I have a feeling that we're going to need a lot of these resources. We're going to need a lot of reinforced stone. We're going to need a lot of compressed iron. And so it might not be a terrible idea to get a bunch more furnaces going here. The extra furnaces are going to allow us to smelt very quickly. Right now, of course, we can place items into our furnace and then sleep to accelerate that time. However, if we have multiple furnaces, we can, of course, smelt more things at once or just more of one individual thing at once, if that makes sense as well. Over here, I did hear that uh, iron complete. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and drop that into the transmutation table. Thankfully, a little cheaper than the gold. And of course, here we can just go drop that in and we're going to get a stack of iron. I do not think we can currently, yeah, we can't process that into any more than just one ingot, unfortunately, but that is still fairly easy iron going forward. So let me quickly get a bunch more stone, I think, and I'm going to interrupt this temporarily just to throw the cobblestone in there. We did set up this new hopping botany pot in the last episode, and so we do now have a ton of oak wood ready for use. We can take all of that and drop some of that into here. You know what, I'll get some more just so we can fill both of these up with fuel. Of course, it would be more fuel efficient for us to make charcoal first, but I think that should be good enough. Let's quickly do a little bit of sleeping and that should very quickly get us uh, two stacks of regular stone that we can then use to try and make a bunch of the reinforced stone to allow us to make more stuff from new craft. And there we go, boom and boom. We now have two stacks of stone and we can go ahead and put our iron back into here. The Twitch chat does point out a few good points here. The first is that uh, charcoal does apparently have an EMC value, which it totally does. So we can get one charcoal and then just get infinite charcoal via EMC, which is going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier and is going to allow us to save all of the wood for crafting. So let's go ahead and drop one log in there. We can get one charcoal and then we can use that going forward. Along the same lines, uh, blaze rods also have an EMC value. And in fact, the blaze rod can burn 12 items and only costs 26 EMC, whereas the charcoal only burns eight items. So you know what? We'll add the charcoal to the transmutation tablet just because we might as well. But then I feel like we should probably just take the blaze mesh, craft that down into blaze rods, add the blaze rods to the transmutation table as well. And then from there, we can just take as many blaze rods as we like and use those as a superior fuel source for all of our furnaces going forward. 
while we wait for those to smelt up though, let's take a look and see if we can't actually make this gas lift. So it seems pretty straightforward. I think we might have some glass left over from the last episode. We do indeed. We also have some compressed iron left over as well, which is good to see. And it's possible that we might also have some pressurized tube. We don't, but we do have some reinforced bricks. I'll take those. And so in order to make the gas lift, we do need the tank. The tank does require some iron bars, which of course is why we're smelting the iron here. Once we have the iron, the iron bars are super easy. And then the pressure tubes are also fairly easy. I'll take a few of those because I think we're going to need a lot of them going forward. And then reinforced stone slabs, which we can make with three reinforced stone. I'll take just the six for now. I think that should be fine because I don't think we're going to need more than one gas lift here. So now we're just missing one compressed iron, which we can make by dropping iron into the crucible, but we can also make by putting iron ingots into the pressure chamber, which I think is going to be the better solution going forward, just because it's so much more easily automated and we don't have to keep swapping out which uh, like base element we have in our crucible and then making sure we've got enough acid in there for it to work and, and all that jazz. So this should be fine. I will put a little bit more fuel in this air compressor. And again, going forward, if we need large amounts of pressure, we can just use more blaze rods as opposed to using regular fuel. The only reason I'm using oak here is that I don't want the pressure to go too high. If I drop like a stack of blaze rods in there, the pressure is going to get real high because I'm going to forget about it. And then when I forget about it, bad things are going to happen because it's going to explode. Back over here, though, we can make our small fluid tank and we can go ahead and make a gas lift. So the way the gas lift works is you can place it down and then you need to provide it with drill pipes. Those are these pipes right here. The drill pipes then get placed down under the gas lift when you provide pressure and the drill pipes will keep getting placed down and down and down until they hit some kind of fluid. Once they hit some kind of fluid, the gas lift will then begin to use the pressure that you're giving it to pump that fluid up into the gas lift. And I believe, as the quest book is probably going to show us, that we're going to be trying to get crude oil. Now, I think before we can get to that point, we might need to get a refinery. Again, super easy recipe here. Another small fluid tank with some more reinforced stone slabs. We already have what it takes to make one more small fluid tank. And then in terms of the rest of this, we just need two redstone. And redstone we can get by dropping cosmic dust into the mana pool with red concrete powder beneath it. Not red concrete, red concrete powder. That should be fine. We do have some mystical red petals, which as we've seen before, we can craft directly into red dye and then it's just a case of getting some sand and some gravel crafting up the red concrete powder and in this case just placing that directly beneath our mana pool we then of course have an infinite amount of cosmic dust and so at this point in time we basically have an infinite amount of redstone the only limiting factor of course being the mana generation back over here we can go ahead and drop maybe half a stack I am a little cautious to not burn all of our mana. Not that it should be too difficult for us to get more. Again, what we can do here is we can take some blaze rods and we can drop those blaze rods directly onto the endo flame and the endo flame will just start using those as a fuel source to produce more mana for the mana pool, which I feel like we might as well do. Even though the endo flame doesn't produce a ton of mana, it is passive mana production, which I think is going to add up over time. Either way, Back over here, we almost have what it takes to make the refinery. We're just missing some more of those reinforced stone slabs. Boom, refinery is complete for now. We'll drop that down right about here. And in newer versions of Pneumaticraft, the refinery is actually a multi-block structure here. And we need to make four refinery outputs. These again are fairly straightforward. We need more glass. We need more reinforced stone slabs, which is why we made so much stone at the start of the episode. And we need some more cosmic ingots. Cosmic ingots, I'm fairly certain that we have. We've got a few of them lying around. And of course, more of the reinforced stone we can make with regular stone and compressed iron. I do think we're going to need even more compressed iron. So I'll throw another seven into there. We've still got iron being made here. And if we need seven of these, that means that we need 42 of these reinforced stone slabs, which means that we need like 21 reinforced stone, I believe. So that's 24. 24 gets us more than enough of the slabs, and then those slabs should just be craftable into the refinery output. For whatever reason, these two cosmic ingots don't stack. I'm not quite sure why. And also, for whatever reason, it looks like you can't shift-click recipes into the crafting table that use the cosmic ingot. I'm not quite sure why that is, but we do have four refinery outputs, and these basically just go on top of the refinery controller. 
So right now, you can put a fluid into the refinery, and it can have one to four outputs. For example, I am fairly certain that we are going to be getting some crude oil. That crude oil can then be placed into the refinery, and depending on the number of refinery outputs that you have, that will determine what outputs you get. So if you just put two refinery outputs on, you will get diesel and LPG. If you put three on, you'll get diesel, kerosene, and LPG. And if you put four on, you'll also get gasoline. And so I don't really foresee a reason for us not to put all four on here. And you'll see that as we do, these tanks become available to us. So let's go all the way up like so. And now when we process our oil, we're going to get all of those byproducts. Speaking of oil, there is the quest to black gold, and we need to obtain crude oil. To do that, I believe we have to head through into purgatory, and as we saw earlier, we're also going to need some of these drill pipes. Thankfully, super easy to make, and there's a few options here with how you do this. You can make a ton of drill pipes and then just put the uh, gas drill down on the surface, and it will go all the way down until it finds the crude oil. However, in this pack, um, I happen to know that the crude oil is just very low down in the purgatory dimension, and if you want to save on crafting a ton of drill pipes, you can just dig down to the crude oil and basically place the gas lift directly on top of the oil, and then it will just pump automatically from there. So we are going to need an air compressor. I'm just gonna steal one of these and very quickly cover that up so that it doesn't lose pressure too, too much. And from there, we do want to make sure we take our temp pad because I would like to put a teleport location right down at the bottom by the crude oil. But we should now be able, and in fact, now that I mention it, I can just use my temp pad to get to Purgatory, which is going to be the easier solution here. Um, although trying to use your temp pad in an enclosed space is never good. Let me try that again. Run program, Purgatory, teleport. I have been told by the pack maker that in this mod pack, the temp head doesn't have a cooldown like it does in other mod packs, which is uh, it's very handy. And I'm going to very quickly go back, actually, because I would like to get a shovel to allow us to actually dig faster than with our fists down to the crude oil. So annoyingly, this sand here is called purged sand that it's from Universe Util, and it doesn't actually benefit from having a shovel which is uh, is unfortunate. I am being told, though, that uh, lower down there is some stone. What we can do, though, of course, is we can go ahead and select Mining Tunnel once again, and that should allow us to very quickly and easily break all of the sand we need to break, although, of course, we do run into the problem that, uh, that sand does fall, and so if we do try using this method, we might end up with just a giant hole in the world here, so maybe not the best idea, actually. So I see some oil. Here we go. So it is down at Y level negative 44, and uh, Purgatory does start up at... Can I put stuff down? Oh, we don't have Quark installed, that's unfortunate. Uh, but Purgatory does start up at uh, Y level 100, so you've got to go quite far down to get to this point. But now, if we place down the gas lift, which I'll put right about here, that should be fine, and then we'll place some of the drill pipes into it. Three should, I think, be enough for it to get to the oil there. And then all we'll do is we'll place down one pressurized tube right about here. We'll place down the air compressor right about there. And then if we put fuel into the air compressor, that, of course, as per usual, is going to start to slowly but surely creep up in terms of pressure. And once it gets up to, by the looks of it, above 0.5 bar, it's going to start putting down this drill pipe. I do think it might have to get a little bit higher before it actually starts pumping, but it shouldn't take us too, too long, I don't think, for us to start getting oil from this gas lift. There we go. Actually, never mind. As soon as it gets to 0.5, it starts producing the crude oil. It only needed one drill pipe to get down to the oil. Of course, if you wanted to, you could put this up on the surface, and the gas lift will put the drill pipe down kind of through the sand and through the stone. So if you don't want to do all the digging, you could just make a ton of drill pipe, but it's just more expensive. Either way, we have 16 buckets of oil. What I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to dig out a little bit of a space here, just because once again, the temp head can be a little finicky if you don't have a good amount of space around it. Sometimes you end up spawning in walls or you end up not being able to see the portal and stuff like that. So I'm just going to dig a little bit of space and we'll put down a new temp head location. We'll call this one blank gold. And then now we can go back to Earth and we can get some kind of fluid holding device. Our options include a regular Minecraft bucket, which we could use to grab the oil. However, I do believe that if we get a fluid tank, the one we've made a few of already, we should be able to get like 16 buckets of crude oil and bring all of that back at once. Boom, there is our small fluid tank. This can hold, never mind, 32 buckets worth of crude oil. And so now, if we run program, go back to black gold, that should take us all the way back down to the oil. It totally does. And then if we just right click on the gas lift, that's gonna put 16 buckets worth of crude oil 
in that tank. And I think if we wait for this to fill back up again to 16 buckets, we should then be able to do the same thing again and take 32 buckets worth of crude oil back through to Earth. We can. Nice. So let's go run program, Earth home base, teleport. The quest itself does want us to use a bucket of oil. So what I am going to do is I'm going to put the tank down. I'm going to grab that bucket out of our chest here and just grab one bucket out of here and then instantly put that back in. Although I believe that what we need to do now is actually start to refine that oil. There we go. I've got to give it a second to actually uh, register the oil in the bucket there. And so we need to get LPG, liquid petroleum gas. As we saw earlier, the LPG can be made by putting the crude oil into the refinery. And so all we should have to do is take the oil out of the tank, put it into the refinery. And if we look at this recipe again in JEI, we'll see that in order for this to work, we have to get the refinery controller to a temperature that is equal to or greater than 100 degrees Celsius. Right now, our refinery controller is at a slightly above room temperature, 27 degrees Celsius. It's a little warm, but it's obviously nowhere near 100 degrees Celsius. We can see that right here, and you can see it in the box at the top there. There are a few ways that we can make this hotter. Um, the easiest, I think, for us is going to be to just grab a bucket of lava from our nearby lake and place that directly under the refinery. That's going to rapidly increase the temperature of the refinery to a point where it should be able to turn that crude oil into LPG. So all we need to do here is place this lava down like so, and that should heat up. And look at that. It does. It goes way above 100 degrees. Lava is very hot. And now we're beginning to produce the diesel, the kerosene, the gasoline, and the LPG. And each one of these associates to each of these refinery outputs. And so if we actually want to get any LPG, we can take that from the top refinery output there. You can see that each one has its own fluid. And so if we wanted to wait for a full bucket's worth, which I guess we're going to have to do to get the quest here. We could do that. Alternatively, if you don't want to wait for a full bucket's worth, you can make another small fluid tank and then right click that on the refinery output. And then you can just take however much LPG is in there and then use that however you like it. While we wait for that, I guess we can go ahead and make ourselves the thermopneumatic processing plant. This I believe is required to process the LPG. You'll see that here we're processing the LPG with coal into molten plastic. So this guy, Again, super straightforward, actually. It just requires two more of those tanks, which is going to require a couple more iron bars. One thing that is going to happen if you do this is the lava will turn to obsidian after a little bit of time, although I'm being told if we right-click the obsidian with the Philosopher's Stone, it actually turns back into lava, which is kind of great. And I am now realizing that I do need to put a few more buckets of oil into here. You can also just right-click the oil tank onto the refinery controller, and that will also just deposit as much oil as the refinery controller can hold all at once. So if I just take this, pick this up and do this, it's going to fill that right up, which is uh, the much faster way of doing it. But uh, over here, we need none of these. We need the thermopneumatic processing plant, which does require some more small fluid tanks, which looks like it requires yet more compressed iron. So I'll throw even more of that in there. Again, thankfully, the, the benefit here is that it does all of it at once. Once we have that back over here, we can once again make the same tank we've made many times now. And that should be basically everything for the thermopneumatic processing plant. Again, I'm fairly certain this is another machine that does have a temperature requirement. Again, if we look at the processing of LPG into plastic, this requires a temperature, again, of above or equal to 100 degrees Celsius. We can, again, just take this bucket of lava and move it over. Or if we really wanted to be fancy, we could go and get a second bucket of lava dedicated to the thermopneumatic processing plant. If you wanted to be super fancy, you could just put it in the ground next to this block of lava and they would share the heat source, which, uh, which would also work. Right now, we are at 630 millibuckets of LPG. So we're getting there slowly but surely. While we wait for that, we are going to need this heat frame. And the heat frame does require another regular furnace, which does require that we throw some more smooth stone in to the crucible. Now, the Twitch chat is pointing out that it's actually probably beneficial uh, for us to make our compressed iron in the crucible as well, simply due to the fact that in the crucible, the compressed iron just requires phosphorus, which we can get basically an unlimited amount of via EMC, and then iron, but unlike the 
pressure chamber recipe, which uses one iron ingot to make one iron, the crucible recipe just uses one iron element to make one iron, and one iron element is one sixteenth of an iron ingot. So it's actually much more efficient for us to just drop a bunch of phosphorus into here and then drop all 13 iron in like that, and we get 13 compressed iron ingots out. So that is definitely the preferred way of doing it. I'm also being told that we can potentially generate EMC by smelting charcoal into graphite. That does seem to work. So charcoal has an EMC of 48, and then you can just smelt that into graphite and drop it right back into the transmutation tablet to gain about 140 EMC. Although I do have a feeling that it's going to be faster for us to just grab a ton of elements and drop all of those in at once, as opposed to waiting for all of that smelting to take place. So I'm being told by the Twitch chat that the click machine here, which doesn't look too difficult to make actually, is going to allow us to do this a lot faster than how we're currently doing it. That did already get us a ton of EMC, which is very nice to see. Also, let's not forget that we have to keep right clicking that obsidian until we get to 1000 millibuckets of LPG. But uh, let's see real quick. I don't think we have enough living rock to make that just yet. We only have seven and seven actually, never mind, is completely acceptable. We have redstone, so we can go ahead and make a block of redstone fairly easily. And we also happen to have a cosmic ingot ready to go. Uh, once again, shift clicking in the cosmic ingot doesn't seem to work. That is completely fine. We can place that in manually, surround that with living rock. And then assuming this doesn't require any kind of power, it is powered by rainbow magic, which you love to see. We can change this to do 20 clicks per second and then if we put in a stack of cosmic dust, it's just going to spew out that stack of elements incredibly quickly. If you tried to automate this, like you could automate it, but if you don't have a way of collecting them, I'm sure this would cause a fair amount of lag fairly quickly, but that does work. It does just kind of vomit out all of those elements incredibly quickly. And that is just a staggering amount of EMC that we can just drop directly into our transmutation table. We are now at 1.1 buckets worth of LPG, so we can take that out. That is gonna complete this quest. And now, as we saw before, we just need to place that into the thermopneumatic processing plant with the bucket of lava. So we'll take this and we'll place that directly under the TPP. That TPP is then gonna get up to temperature nice and quickly. And as soon as we put in some regular old coal, we can then begin to turn that into molten plastic. Now, coal doesn't have any MC value, but we can compress charcoal into coal. We can also craft carbon with the Philosopher's Stone to make coal, which I think might be the better solution. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a lot faster. Boom, that's gonna make us some plastic. And now, if we don't want our base to burn down, let's get rid of that. Now we need to get that bucket of plastic. Let's go and take that out of this guy. Quest complete, you'll have to see it. Um, as I mentioned before, I believe we need the heat frame. So the heat frame, is going to require more compressed stone. The compressed stone requires the smooth stone, the smooth stone we have, and the crucible, hopefully, is still set to acid. And so if we just drop eight into there, fantastic. We can then go and craft up yet another Minecraft furnace, and we can craft up the heat frame. The heat frame is a super interesting little device because what it does is it allows you to either heat up or cool down items in an inventory, so for example, if we get a chest, we can place that chest down, let's say right about here. And then you right click the heat frame onto that inventory and it kind of engulfs the chest. And you'll see now the chest has a temperature up at the top, again, 27 degrees. As of right now, we could heat that up with lava, but I believe that what we need to do is actually cool that down massively. Because in order to obtain plastic sheets, we need to have a bucket or a tank with molten plastic and we need to get it to a temperature below zero degrees Celsius. And then that will produce the plastic sheet for us. So I think in order to cool it down, unfortunately, it's not quite as easy as throwing like a block of ice or a block of snow underneath the chest. That doesn't seem to work. However, what we can do is we can get the vortex tube from Pneumaticraft, this guy right here. And what this does is this splits incoming air into hot and cold components. One side gets hot, the other side gets cold. And essentially, what we can do here is we can provide this with pressure and it will use that pressure to heat up machines on one side of the vortex tube and cool down machines on the other side. So for this, we need two aluminum ingots, we need five compressed iron and two pressurized tubes. Most of that stuff we already have, we've got the pressurized tubes and we can of course make the compressed iron using the iron element that we have over in here. I'll take a stack just because we have so much EMC and I'll just drop that into the crucible. I am a little concerned about 
the fires that are being caused, and I'm a little concerned about mobs breaking in here. We can just reinforce this fence a little bit. It's gonna look bad, but that's fine. And then from, <laughs> from there, we can take our compressed iron. And what are we missing? We're just missing the aluminum, of course. But with that, we should just be able, as per usual, to grab some aluminum out of the transmutation table, drop that into the pressure chamber. So never mind, the aluminum can't be put into the pressure chamber. That is unfortunate. Although we did get some aluminum from Purgatory. That is quite useful. Um, so maybe you have to go and loot from Purgatory, potentially? Either way, we have it, and so I will take it. And that's uh, more than enough to make the vortex tube. So this needs to go down the correct way, which is this way. One side is blue, one side is red. We can then hook that up to our pre-existing network with some pipe like so. That's going to begin to provide pressure to the Vortex Tube, which is then going to begin to cool down the chest. You'll see the chest right now, negative 12, negative 17, negative 40, 50, 60. The colder it is, the faster the process will work. But now, if we put this bucket of molten plastic into this chest that is surrounded with the heat frame, it's going to instantly turn that bucket of molten plastic into plastic sheets, which is pretty cool stuff. We can do the same again. We can take all of our buckets here and drop all of those in here. And of course, if we wanted to, I don't know if it's a random chance though. I saw that we got one we got two the first time and one the second time. Oh, there's a 1% chance of extra plastic sheet per degree below 100 degrees. Interesting. So if you get to negative 240 like we have, I guess you're quite likely to get even more plastic, which is interesting. But um, I do think it's probably worth just grabbing another small fluid tank and then using that to take all of the plastic out of here and then put that tank in here, at which point that should begin just turning all of the plastic in that tank into plastic sheets. And I do think we're going to need a lot of plastic sheets going forward. But of course, we can continually go ahead and uh, right click on the obsidian with the philosopher's stone. And if we really wanted to, we could even make a few more click machines. And if we make more philosopher's stones, which we can't do just yet, but we could take our current philosopher's stone, place that in the click machine and have that continually right click on the block that is going to turn into obsidian. And at that point, whenever it does turn into obsidian, it should turn directly back into lava. In fact, let's give that a try. I don't think we're going to need more EMC just yet. If we pick this up, we can then place that click machine down like this, and it does face you when you place it down. And so now if we put the Philosopher's Stone in there, that's gonna start to click. We can turn the number of clicks up, although it doesn't need to be crazy high. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the lava here. Annoyingly, <laughs> it is cycling through. If I put down like, um, I wanna put something down that doesn't transform. There we go, okay. So that should work as intended. And then what we can do is we can just take this Thermonumatic processing plant. We are going to lose a little bit of LPG here, but I think that's fine. And I'm just going to put that down right here next to that lava, like so. And that way, these should both be able to share the heat from that lava, and that lava should basically never extinguish. And then, potentially, the final piece of the puzzle is to get a fluid hopper from Pneumatic Craft, that being this one right here, a liquid hopper. The liquid hopper is just a small tank and a regular Minecraft hopper. That seems pretty straightforward. Let's grab two oak logs. Let's craft those into a good old-fashioned Minecraft chest, and then, of course, into a good old-fashioned Minecraft hopper, which looks something like this. For those of you unfamiliar, we can then go boom and boom. That's going to get us the liquid hopper. And then from there, I believe what we should be able to do is pump that into the refinery. And I didn't actually know that that was going to work. I was expecting to have to move the fluid tank on top of the liquid hopper, but it does, in fact, connect to the nearby tank there. And that should keep this refinery controller filled with crude oil. That crude oil should continually get turned into these four elements, specifically we're after the LPG. And then if we really wanted to, I imagine we could make like four fluid hoppers to extract from here and then go down into this. That would work, but I don't know if it's going to be strictly necessary. If we need to automate this to an extreme degree, if it turns out we need, you know, hundreds of plastic, we could potentially look at doing that. But for the time being, I think moving this manually is going to be fine. And then it's just a case, of course, of putting even more coal into that machine to allow it to keep turning the LPG into plastic. Of course, to do that, we do need the Philosopher's Stone, which we can take temporarily as and when we need it. Cool. Once we've done that, we can come over periodically and just right click with the fluid tank, drop that in here, and that's going to keep making plastic for us. There is then, of course, the quest for the actual transmutation table itself. The transmutation table, thankfully, doesn't have like a physical inventory, so you can pick it up and put it back down, and it does retain all of its information. So now we have plastic. The next stage of the process is going to be trying to make circuit boards, as I mentioned earlier in the stream. As a reward for making that plastic, we do get the uh, PCB blueprint, which I believe is required 
in order to make the UV light box here, which other than that doesn't seem too difficult. Before I do that though, I would like to get this guy, the temporal pouch, which might seem a little bit useless in this pack. And for those unfamiliar, this is essentially a time in a bottle equivalent. The way it works is you just leave this in your inventory and over time it will passively gain time. You'll see it contains zero seconds worth of grains of time. As you hold it in your inventory, that number will go up and then you can use that number. You can spend that time to make individual machines faster. The reason I think that's useful is that going forward, as the base becomes more and more complex, sleeping to make individual machines faster can be quite dangerous, especially with pneumatic craft, because as we've seen before, if the pressure gets too high, things will explode. And so I think it's going to be beneficial for us to be able to pinpoint what we want to make faster using the temporal pouch. And the temporal pouch really isn't too expensive. It does require five leather, which we do have. We've got eight from all of the cows that we killed looking for food in the first episode. It also requires quite a bit of cosmic dust, but of course we do have an unlimited amount of that cosmic dust, so we'll take this. And then it also requires two blocks of gold, which is by far and away the most expensive part of the whole endeavor. I do think we have some gold in here. We do, and I think, yes, we do have a few gold ingots as well. So that's going to take us to eight. We need uh, 18. So let's quickly grab uh, 10 more gold from here. We can then smelt all of that up over here. And of course, sleep to make that just a little bit faster. These are done. Let's craft up that block of gold and hopefully the temporal pouch. Again, certain items like the cosmic dust don't like to be shift clicked in. That is fine. Boom and boom. The temporal pouch is ours. And I'm being told by the Twitch chat here, and real quick, I'm just going to do a few of these just to get some more plastic coming in. But uh, I'm being told by the Twitch chat that we can actually sleep with the temporal pouch in our inventory to accelerate the rate at which it gains seconds. Like you'll see right now, it's going up one second per second, which is what you would expect. But apparently, if we just go and sleep with the pouch, right now it's at 27 seconds. If we sleep through the night here, I'm being told that we will wake up to many more seconds. Another benefit of the pouch here is that it appears that the bed effect gets worse over time. You'll see right now it's about 8x on the multiplier in the top left there, uh, bouncing, I guess, between 8 and 10. Whereas when we first started the pack, it was up at, at 20, 30x. So it does take us longer now. We have to spend more time in bed to get the same multiplicative effect. But uh, yeah, we've got 10 minutes worth of time in our temporal pouch, which we can now use to speed up individual machines. For example, if we were to go and get some more oil, so we'll take this, and we'll head back down with our temporal pouch to our black gold location. We can then take all the oil out of the tank and I will wait for it to fill up once again so we can get the full 32 buckets worth of crude oil. Once we have the full 32 buckets worth, we can head back to Earth and we should be able to use the time in our pouch to speed up the refinery. So I'll put this down like so. That's going to start moving the oil over. If I right click on the pouch, you'll see here it's multiplying it by 4x for 30 seconds. Uh, it starts at 2, goes to 4, then goes to 8, then 16. And over here, we can do the same as well. 2, 4, 8, 16. And that should, I think, start to turn that crude oil into LPG at a much faster rate. And again, we can go really as fast as we like here. Until you run out of time, that is. We did just spend 10 minutes getting up to, uh, to 16x. It is quite expensive, but sleeping does make that a little bit easier. And then, of course, we can just take that LPG and place it into here. And so now going forward, making the plastic should be fairly straightforward. We'll drop all that in like so. The Philosopher's Stone is doing its job, which is good to see. We do need yet more carbon because we have completely burned through all of the coal that we placed into the thermopneumatic processing plant. One nifty feature here, by the way, is uh, if you just place all of your stuff into the crafting grid, you can just press this balance grid button and it will balance the grid out, making recipes like this significantly easier. You can, of course, also just click and drag, but uh, if you happen to misclick at all, you can use that balance crafting grid button to repair any mistakes. We'll take all of that coal, drop it all in here. That's gonna make a ton of plastic for us, especially because of the fact that you actually get more plastic than you do LPG. It's actually a 10X ratio, so for every 100 millibuckets of LPG, you get one bucket of plastic, or for every one bucket of LPG, you get 10 buckets of molten plastic. And as per usual, we'll take this, we'll drop that in here. This is at 28 degrees Celsius though, and that's because uh, unlike the pressure chamber, which only does use pressure when we put something in it, the vortex tube is constantly using pressure to constantly cool down the chest. And so we are gonna have to get yet more fuel 
to get the uh, the temperature back up. But again, we can now potentially use our grains of time to make the air compressors faster. So if we do this and this, we can go ahead and accelerate these two like that, making them twice as fast as they were previously. And that should get our Vortex 2 back up to temperature, uh, back down to temperature, I should say, that much faster. Our fence does keep breaking here. It might not be a terrible idea to maybe put some blocks down around the lava that might prevent the fire from spreading. If we just do something like this, I'm hopeful that that will potentially limit the spread of fire. We might even need to do a bit more than that or potentially move the whole structure away from the fence a little bit more. We'll see how that works out. The chat does also make a good point, actually, in that we can now look to make speed upgrades from pneumaticraft. These are used in machines like the air compressor in these upgrade slots to make them faster passively without having to use the temporal pouch. Now, in order to make these, we need lapis, we need sugar. Of course, we have sugarcane growing over here, and currently we have 256, which you love to see, and lapis we can, of course, get via our mana pool. However, the only thing we don't have is lubricant, but lubricant we can get by putting diesel and redstone into the TPP, the thermoneumatic processing plant. And so what I think I will do here is take our small fluid tank, again, take even more plastic out of here. We need to kind of empty out the LPG that's in there or use it all to make even more plastic. And then we can start taking some of the diesel out of here and using that in the thermoneumatic processing plant to make lubricant, at which point we can then use that to make speed upgrades. And those speed upgrades can go into things like the air compressor to allow us to get back up to our desired pressure in the future much, much faster. Okay, so I've used most of the LPG in here. The tricky part here is um, is breaking the thermoneumatic processing plant without losing it to the lava. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break this block. I'm gonna pick the lava up and then I'm gonna pick up the thermoneumatic processing plant. I think it's quite likely that we would have been able to, geez, that sound is horrible. It's um, it's quite possible that we would have been able to pick it up without... Oh, it doesn't lose its inventory. Oh, that's unfortunate. Can I, like... Can I fluid hopper out of this into a tank? Or if I put it down the other way? That's unfortunate. To be fair, I don't think that the um, thermonematic processing plant was so difficult to make that we can't just make another one yeah it's actually very straightforward and so i'll take a new one we'll put the new one down like that we probably should have just done that to begin with but either way now we can take diesel out of here put that into here and that should start breaking down the diesel of course with redstone which we should have over here uh, to produce the lubricant nice we can then take the lubricant unfortunately this one is a one-to-one -one, not a two-to-one so not quite uh, not a ten-to-one so not quite as good as the plastic but if we take some lapis and if we take some sugar can we should be able to make some sugar and then from there we should be able to make speed upgrades now i believe you can put i think up to four of these into any given machine so i can put one of these in here and that's going to make that just that little bit faster it's going to get up to pressure just that little bit faster uh, it does say here that we can put in oh a maximum of 10 speed upgrades so they do stack as well which is quite handy the only thing that i'm really concerned about here is our mana situation because of course we have a ton of cosmic dust that's not going to be a problem and we have the blue concrete here which is going to allow us to get the lapis from the mana pool but we don't have a ton of mana available but you know what let's do 16 more here get a bunch of, uh, of lapis of course the sugar cane is not a problem we've got really as much of that as we like and then we can make even more of that just as soon as we get even more lubricant Chad does make a good point here in that there are two alternate recipes for the, the speed upgrade, or a few alternate recipes, I should say, but uh, you can either use the lapis lazuli or you can use the upgrade matrix, and the upgrade matrix can turn can be made with one lapis, so you use water and one lapis to make four upgrade matrix, so you can save a lot of lapis, actually, by doing that, which I think might be worth doing, to be fair. Do I have what it takes to make yet another small tank? I feel like all we've made today is small tanks, but there we go. We have what it takes to make another small tank. Uh, thankfully, the lubricant is made one bucket at a time, and so we never have any like leftover little bits inside of this thermodynamic processing plant. And so now, if we put some lapis in here and we grab some water, we should be able to make those upgrade matrices, and that should hopefully work. The only trouble with that is that it requires a temperature below zero, and so we actually have to move this over 
to here. So I'm being told by the Twitch chat that the everythingness block that we get from the void dimension is actually very cold and that a block of compressed iron can be used to transfer heat. And so if you put down the thermodynamic processing plant, unfortunately, unlike with lava, you can't just put the nothingness block next to it to get, oh no, you can, the temperature just goes down. Huh. That would have been a lot easier than making the vortex tube. The vortex tube has its benefits in that this chest is now incredibly cold at negative 272 degrees Celsius. And so we can use it to get even more plastic. Like we can use the multiplicative effect to get more plastic to our benefit. But this actually just works. We can just put this in and that's just going to get us the matrices. Although it looks like, annoyingly, this one actually requires pressure. The previous ones didn't require any pressure whatsoever. This one does require pressure. That is fine however in order to get the pressure we do need some more sand because we need to be able to get one more batch of tubes again we can use the pouch here to make that nice and quick and then in here let's get another batch of tubing and i'm just going to run from the pre-existing tubing in a very awkward and janky fashion around like that and that should hopefully allow this to work so long as the pressure is high enough which of course it is not that's fine let's do this and this, and this, and this. Okay, so I'm a fool. This just required pressure. It didn't require cooling at all. But the cooling is interesting to know because it means that if you're watching this and you want to do this, you don't have to make the vortex tube. You can just put down the uh, the everything in this block, and I think that will work just as well. For now, we can just take a few more buckets of water, drop those in there, and that's going to get us even more of these upgrade matrixes and we can use those to make even more speed upgrades, specifically for things like the air compressors, just to make them faster for us in the future. All right, so now we've got five more speed upgrades. We can put those in, and that's going to allow this to much, much more quickly get up to pressure, which is nice. You'll see that burn through its coal a lot faster than this one burned through its coal. But either way, chat, I think that is going to about do it for this episode of Universe IO. Next time, we'll come back. We'll make the artificial sun rays, aka the UV light box. We'll get ourselves the engraving tank, also known as the etching tank, and we'll get the etching acid, which should be fairly straightforward using the pressure chamber. And then from there, I believe we can get our first circuits. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we're also probably going to be looking at uh, setting up some automation using the assembly line features from Pneumatic Craft. And once that's done, I don't think we have too much longer to go in the industrial age before we move on into the digital age but those are all problems for future isaac for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of universe io there 